I wanted to make an aquarium with plants, but without adding carbon dioxide, fertilizers of any kind, or root tabs. I didn't know anything about this, so over time I made some changes. I wanted to film this to show others the short life of an ecosystem like this. During this project, I discovered that there are different types of ecosystems. Wallstad method, dirted tank, low tech. I chose to take something from each one, but in most cases I didn't take, but rather gave up some equipment that maintained this ecosystem. During this time, I noticed that some plants did not survive without the addition of carbon dioxide or other fertilizers. That didn't stop me from massively trimming the plants. To demonstrate that their growth is influenced by their number. After the first year, I wanted to see what other plants, especially the red ones, could still survive in an aquarium without adding carbon dioxide or any other kind of fertilizer. Time has passed, and the craziest things were about to happen. I don't even know how time has flown by. And after 500 days of focusing on this aquarium, I'm going to give you some tips and show you some things that I wouldn't have believed at first, and that still seem incredible to me. This ecosystem keeps 26 fish alive. It goes against everything we know about aquariums. First of all, the aquarium is overpopulated. 26 fish in 54 liters of water. But in the same water, there are also 30, 50 red cherry shrimp. And at least five species of snails. But there is a trick about the fish. The fish in this aquarium were chosen because they are not aggressive and are small in size. If instead of the 26 great fish, only two fish were chosen, but unsuitable ones, the whole balance of the ecosystem would have been disturbed. It took me 500 days to learn aquarium keeping done this way. And the crazy thing is, I feel like I'm just getting started. I've noticed some patterns, but I still don't know what triggers them. I have never used a filter, but I have used a water pump. The water pump was used to ensure water circulation, but after the water pump was removed from the aquarium, I realized that there was no need for a device to ensure water circulation. But why is there no filter in the aquarium? There is no filter in the aquarium because there is no need. And yet in this aquarium, in the absence of a filter, not a single fish has died in over 500 days. There is a filter in the aquarium, but not an artificial one. It is a natural one, and it is very complex. It is made up of plants, substrate with all the bacteria that live in this substrate, snails, shrimps, and fish.
Surprisingly, the number of snails is small. I expected a snail invasion. But what is surprising is that periodically, only one species of snail is breeding. Then they stop and make room for another species to breed. Red cherry shrimp reproduce at a rapid rate. Although many of the shrimp fry are eaten by fish, the shrimp population continues to grow. Of the three fish species, I only observed celestial pearl danios fry. But I did not intervene to move them separately. And the chances of survival with the adults are very small, almost non-existent. Let's talk about a hot topic. No water changes. At some point, I gave up on water changes. I just top up with water. This, along with the lack of a filter and a large number of fish, attract criticism from any aquarist. But still, this ecosystem, like many others, shown more and more often by some aquarists, stubbornly keeps itself alive, although it is not well known. The most common reaction I get regarding the lack of water changes is that at some point a large amount of salts, minerals, and other things accumulate in the water, and their amount must be reduced through water changes. I agree with this, that some salts, minerals, or other things will be in increasingly large quantities in the aquarium. But I think that's only half of it. The other half is as follows. Some of this stuff in the water is consumed by fish, shrimp, snails, worms, bacteria, plants, and other things. And another part of the stuff that is not eliminated due to the lack of water exchange turns into something else. On this occasion, I must also mention the gas bubbles existing in the substrate of the aquarium. Gas bubbles are formed in the substrate since the first months of life of this aquarium. But although they have an important role in keeping this ecosystem alive, I forgot about them because you can't see them unless you disturb the substrate. Somehow, the gas in the substrate is used by the plants. The gravel of this aquarium acts as a diffuser. It breaks the gas bubbles into very small bubbles that you can't see with the naked eye. What do you think? If I don't change the water and this gas forms in the substrate, are the fish in the aquarium in danger? Yes, this aquarium is different, but it's nothing new. I'm just about 30 years late. I get feedback from aquarists from various parts of the world who still have or have had aquariums like this without adding carbon dioxide, without fertilizers, without a filter, and without changing the water. I also received valuable advice from them. I appreciate it. Thank you. But the biggest problem of this aquarium is the biggest problem of any aquarist, algae. In these 500 days, I fought with algae continuously. I was helped in this fight by fish, shrimps, and snails. I tried to keep the algae under control, finding adequate lighting, light duration, and light intensity. 
I noticed that if I decreased the light duration and intensity, this helped in the fight with algae. But the plants started to die. The more light the plants have, the more energy they have to fight for survival. In the over 500 days, I tried several lighting options. Currently, the lighting duration is 10 hours a day, with a 5-hour siesta, as recommended by the Wallstad method. But plants? Why do they grow without carbon dioxide and what plants do I recommend for a low-tech aquarium? My experience in keeping this ecosystem alive led me to the conclusion that this ecosystem is not stable. Not in a bad way, but in the following way. If you already have an aquarium, you may have heard of the nitrogen cycle. Theoretically, the nitrogen cycle in aquariums is a crucial process for maintaining water quality and ensuring the health of aquatic life. This cycle involves the transformation of toxic waste into less harmful compounds through the action of beneficial bacteria. But in this type of aquarium, it is a little different. Not because many argue that you should not wait for it to cycle, being cycled from day one. But because, and here I am, the one who is responsible for the following statement. This type of aquarium is in a state of continuous change. A continuous evolution. It is as if the nitrogen cycle would last longer, maybe years. But this is not about the nitrogen cycle. I believe that now, as I explain this to you, in this aquarium, other cycles of other biochemical elements are going on. And their duration is not short, like in the nitrogen cycle, but takes place over a longer period of time, perhaps even years. In general, aquarists have paid attention only to the nitrogen cycle because without it, you could not keep fish in the aquarium. But other biochemical transformations which take longer have been ignored especially since some natural stages have been taken over by the hardware equipment used in aquariums. Of course, plants need carbon dioxide to grow, and the plants in this aquarium can take this carbon dioxide from two places. From the substrate, you saw those gas bubbles in the substrate. It's not just carbon dioxide, there are more gases there. And the balance in the substrate and in the ecosystem is given by the concentration of these gases. Also, plants take carbon dioxide from the air. At the surface of the water, there is an exchange of several gases. Carbon dioxide from the air thus enters the water in the aquarium. If you have more knowledge and can help me with more information, I am open to receiving help. Thank you. The best plants that grow without adding carbon dioxide. Before starting this project, I did a lot of research on which plants to choose. Of course, not all the plants I chose survived in this aquarium for two possible reasons. One, the information I used was not exactly correct, so I used the wrong plants. Two, the plants I chose were not suitable for the substrate I chose, or they did not like something specific to this ecosystem. The same plant, which grows beautifully in this aquarium, may not survive in another similar aquarium, and vice versa because each type of aquarium of this kind is a unique ecosystem. You can find on this YouTube channel several videos dedicated only to the plants in this aquarium 
as well as a video in which I showed which plants were planted from the first day of this aquarium that have survived to this day. I did an initial planting when setting up this aquarium 500 days ago. And the second planting was after a year when I planted only red plants. I am testing 10 new red plants. To give the plants a better chance of survival, I increased the light intensity. This, of course, will increase the amount of algae in the aquarium, which is why I introduced Otocinclus catfish into the aquarium. This fish loves to eat algae. I don't understand this plant. It has intensified its color in recent weeks. But the leaves, no matter how small they are, all have holes in them, and it is no longer producing new leaves. All new plants have problems growing. Every day I find at least one broken leaf floating around. However, it is a plant that, although initially it did not grow at all, has recently had rapid growth. So it is unpredictable. Although some plants last for several months, their struggle for survival ends in the absence of the addition of carbon dioxide and other types of fertilizers. I recommend these two videos, but on this YouTube channel, you can find the entire history of this aquarium.